Hi, my name is Garrett Fry, and I'm going to walk you through a process that I go into depth on in a Noman Workshop training DVD called Advanced 3D Map Painting Techniques, where I incorporate photogrammetry into a map painting process, which is creating a model based on a series of images, and then take that model into Mari, paint on that model, and project those images onto the model, and then export that through the Nuke Mari Bridge into Nuke, where it can be lit and incorporated into a matte painted environment. To give this process a little bit of context, I want to explain to you how a matte painter would use Mari and how a texture artist would use Mari uh, and some of the differences there. And really what it comes down to is what a texture artist or a matte painter is expecting to get out of Mari. So as a texture artist, uh, their end goal is to texture a model and to deliver an asset to be consumed. And for a matte painter, however, they are expecting to get a final matte painted element uh, to be put into a matte painting. So a texture artist will receive a model. It will be UV'd or they will UV it themselves and uh, they will paint within Mari and then deliver that asset. Matte painting, on the other hand, and especially using this process, like I mentioned earlier, of photogrammetry, they'll have a lot of images that will build a model, and they'll texture that model within Mari, and then they'll be getting a final matte painted element um, that can be lit and integrated into a matte painted environment. Maybe an easy way to understand the distinction between these two different end goals is to understand that as a texture artist, they are painting textures that have no lighting information, and that lighting information will be provided by the renderer. But uh, matte painting will uh, bake or paint light into the textures, and when it comes out of Mari, it will have lighting information. It will have inclusion. It will have... Um, it will have a, an ambient light or even a directional light source. So in that sense, matte painting is getting a final matte painted element. And the distinction between those two, texturing is painting with, without light, and matte painting is painting with light. Another difference between matte painting and texturing is that texturing will create an asset for a model that can be seen in multiple shots from all different kinds of angles. Matte painting will create an element specific to a camera move for a shot or a series of shots within a sequence. And because of that, matte painting can be really fast and efficient in the way that they build things. Now I'm going to show you the roughly seven different steps it takes to go through this process. And I'm going to be showing you and cutting in some clips from uh, the Noman DVD so you can see visually see the process as I explain it to you so it's easy to understand. The first step in this process is to take photos around the object that you want to capture and to be in the shot. And so here you can see I've taken a lot of photos and gotten a lot of coverage of this gothic archway um, uh, from all different angles and I'm going to use these images to build myself a photogrammetry mesh. So the next step is to load all these images in and run them through the photogrammetry software. And it's gonna build me a mesh and it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna give me all the proportions and it's gonna give me cameras and images to project through onto the model later in the process. So I can use this model now and in step three, to build a low resolution mesh. And this is the mesh that I'm going to be projecting onto or having as a UV'd object. Now, once I have a basic mesh modeled, I'm going to project from one of the cameras that was used to build the photogrammetry mesh onto the geometry that I just built and then I'm going to model underneath the projection. And what I'm doing now is I'm photo modeling. I'm modeling based on an image that's being projected 
onto the geometry. And in that way, the geometry and the image really tightly line up. So I will next take all of the projection cameras and the projection images and the model that I created based on those images, the clean low res model, import them all into Nuke and then send them through the Nuke Mari bridge into Mari. And I'll start painting through these different projection cameras of the different images and I will get a complete texture based on the image coverage that I have. I then have two different options of exporting my work that I've done in Mari. I can either set it up as a projection setup or I can export the whole thing as a UV textured object and both of those can live within Nuke. Or I can come up with a combination of those two of having a UV textured base and then a projected uh, texture on the top or vice versa. Now that we have our object in Nuke, we can relight uh, this object based on colored masks. So I can give it a internal light and a directional light and um, relight this object so that it feels integrated into the map painted environment. And so it feels uh, like it belongs and it lives there and it matches the lighting of all of the other elements. I can now show you the final result of this process and uh, you can see that through our camera move here uh, our object is working. It has it has the sense of being 3D even though it's a matte painted element. It's being projected onto 3D geometry. It has parallax. It has form. Um, and uh, if you were to take a look at that uh, model uh, within Nuke here, you would see that it is uh, quite low res. Um, so it's fast to render. And if we take a look at it with the textures on it, you can see that from this camera point of view, it's not going to preview all the projections exactly perfect in the OpenGL preview, but from this camera angle, it is uh, good and correct. If you go around to the back side, it's uh, all smearing and broken. And that's because as a matte painter, I am not worried about creating the perfect asset. I need to create something that's going to work specifically for this camera point of view. So you can see here um, the cameras that I have here, the different projection cameras, and my, sh my shot camera moving through here. And like I said earlier, that's a fundamental difference between matte painting and texture painting. A texture artist is painting something for an asset, and this asset will be able to be seen from any angle and from any shot. A matte painter is only worried about creating an asset for a specific shot. So they custom fit an asset to work with a specific camera or a series of cameras that the object is seen in. And if we had a more extreme camera angle than what we have here, then all I would do is go through the same process uh, and create more projections around the object and increase the viewing angle uh, so that it worked with a more extreme camera move or uh, several camera moves within a sequence. If I needed to take this low-res matte painted projected element and turn it into a high-res universal asset uh, model that could be seen from every single angle, then all I would do is I'd go back to the model and up-res it, lay out the UVs appropriately, and then take that model back into Mari, version up the model, and bake in the textures into the new UVs and I would be using the exact same setup that I had created earlier and I wouldn't waste any of that work and then I would continue on with all of the other projections around the object um, and create a full textured asset and that's some of the beauty of Mari is that it retains that projection information and is independent of the model. You can up-res the model, you can change it, and then you just bake stuff back into it.
Let me quickly walk you through the lighting setup that I use to relight this Gothic archway. And you can see here that I have five projections that make up the base texture of this Gothic archway, and they're all feeding into uh, the geometry and going into the scanline render node. And I have several grade nodes that I'm using to uh, relight the uh, the object, and that's being driven by some 3D masks that I created. So let me pick walk through all of these uh, nodes so that you can see what um, what the effect of these different grade nodes are doing. And so this is the base texture of the Gothic archway. And because I'm the shot that I'm working on for the Noman DVD is a night scene, so I wanted to color correct it for night. And so uh, the first color correction I have here is to darken it to simulate that it's, uh, that it's at night. The next color correction, I'm adding this internal light that's going to be coming from the fire, and that's animated, uh, and so it's flickering on and off. And if we take a look at the next one here, we can see uh, this strong directional light uh, that's going on here. And if I wanted to manipulate this uh, light here, uh, the color and the intensity, then I would just go here in my grade node and start changing that so that uh, it gives me a, the ability to really fine tune and uh, integrate this element into the whole of the shot. And so I have control over uh, the intensity and uh, the color of the light. So here is the final element after being relit for a nighttime scene. And as you can see, it has a real nice sense of directional moonlight and an animated firelight within. Um, and I have control over all the different elements uh, the lighting direction, the color, the intensity of all the different lights. And it's all being manipulated within Nuke, and it's very fast. And I can see uh, real-time the changes that I'm making. And I don't have to wait for long renders uh, to see the effect of the choices that I'm making. As far as a process, this took a fraction of the time that it would have taken if you were to fully model, texture, and light this element. And if you needed to take it to that level, then you could do that without having to redo the work that you've already put into it. This process is made possible by the Foundry and the great products that they offer, that of Nuke and of Mari, and the Nuke Mari Bridge that connects those together. The Foundry has really done a lot to enhance the workflow of matte painters and providing matte painters the tools to create really immersive environments. So thank you, Foundry, for providing these tools and providing this opportunity for me to talk to you about uh, this specific photogrammetry uh, method and incorporating that into a map painting workflow. Thank you for watching and if you want to see me teach this process in depth along with a lot of other map painting techniques about nine hours of training then that title is available through the Noman Workshop and it's called Advanced 3D Map Painting Techniques by myself, Garrett Fry.